Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, welcome. My name is Vanessa Cisneros, and I am a, a member of the Board of the International Light Association. And today I'm very excited to bring to you our, our wonderful speaker, Marta Wozniak, who is an assistant professor at the Breslau Medical University at the Pathology Department. And I'm excited to have you here with us today because Marta is a scientist and she is doing amazing work with cancer and light. Marta, welcome. Welcome to, uh, to this session. And um, please tell us about you and your, what got you involved in this and, and your medical and your educational background. Tell us about you. Thank you, Vanessa. Nice to see you. Thank you for introducing me. Um, yes, uh, I am a scientist and how it is, how is it started? So oh, I, uh, after my uh, master uh, degree, I decided to uh, expand my knowledge about uh, cells, especially cancer cells. And my dream was to um, find the cure for cancer. Yeah, so this is how we start sometimes and why we choose PhD studies uh, for that. And uh, yeah, that dream came, came true and I uh, started my PhD studies at the Wrocław Medical University uh, in the Department of Pathology. And I was trying uh, to learn, a, learn a, bit of, mm, a, a little bit about the light and the power of light. Uh, and how we can use the light to cure uh, ourselves uh, and how we can um, uh, produce a cytotoxic effect to uh, cancer cells. So my professor is a master of photodynamic therapy and I prepared uh, a nice presentation about the photodynamic therapy and about uh, how, how it works actually and what kind of results do I uh, have. Uh, Wonderful. Uh, so go ahead and, and show us, tell us, tell us about your latest research. Okay, so the title of my presentation is The Power of Light, How Photodynamic Therapy Affects Skin Cancer Cells. So my recent stud studies were uh, connected with uh, skin cancer, but we can use photodynamic therapy to many, many, many kinds of cancers. Um, I would like to First, start with the characteristic of photodynamic therapy and present what, what is this kind of um, therapy uh, focused on. And then I would like to say something about tumor microenvironment because it's very important for us scientists to uh, design new therapies. Then I would like to say something about photosensitizer a uh, very magical word, word for, uh, and important for photodynamic therapy, as well as oxygen. And then I will present some uh, results of my experiments and how I conduct those experiments. So let's start. So what the photodynamic therapy is consists of. So as you can see, uh, can you see the uh, perfect uh, arrow? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, when we would like to, when we uh, are saying about photodynamic therapy, we mean three compounds. Uh, the first one is photosensitizer, and the second one is oxygen, and the last one, but not the least, is the light. And when we combine all those three compounds we can say about photodynamic therapy. So what this magical photosensitizer means, uh, it's a drug or it's a substance, substance that will accumulate in cancer cells, especially in cancer cells, and uh, it will produce reactive oxygen species when we irradiate it with the light, with the appropriate uh, wavelength of light and the power of light and then we can uh, observe cytotoxic effect that is uh, at the end of our therapy 
Okay. So regarding tumor microenvironment, we can briefly see in the center of the slide that it may look simple, but when we see it clearly under bigger magnification, we can see that there are different kinds of cells, not only cancer cells, but also we have, we have immune cells from our immune system. Uh, we have cell uh, matrix that is connected with fibroblasts and we have uh, the vessel and the vessel that will give all the oxygen supply and glucose supply to cancer cells. So in the center of the big tumor, we don't have the vessels. They are around, but not inside because tumor cells are proliferating. So dividing, dividing, dividing very, very quickly. And the tumor is growing up. So in the center, there is a part with necrosis. So we have dead cells. That's a good idea that we know about that, but we have to remember that we have different kinds of cells in the tumor. So not only the cells that are cancer cells. Mm -hmm. And the way that we can give our substance there are vessels. So, and when we choose bigger magnification, we can see those different cells that they are connected all together and they co communicate. And with, when we use photodynamic therapy, we focus only on cancer cells because we use photosensitizer that is very selective for cancer cells. We don't want to kill our healthy cells. So the main goal in improvement of photodynamic therapy is focusing on the photosensitizer that is maybe somehow um, closed in a different nano, nano substances, nano carriers, or we would like to focus on something that will go through the different ways to cancer cells, let's say different receptors, but we don't want any effect that our photosensitizer will also kill, uh, kill our normal cells. So this is why we are focusing on, on specific photosensitizers. Why we need a proper light? Because we want to, uh, with the irradiation of this light, we want to start the process of activation of this photosensitizer. And what I mean about activation, that this photosensitizer will produce a lot of oxygen species. Let's go deeper there. This is a short uh, sum up of the previous slide. So it's wor worth to remem remember that, uh, that the tumors can be, in, uh, if they are bigger in the center, there is not a blood supply. So we have necrosis. We have different kinds of cells that build, build our tumor. And uh, cancer cells are very smart, so they can, produce uh, the process of drug efflux. So sometimes we, if we use a normal drug, they will push it out from the, from the inside. And they are also very smart because they have such a beautiful system that they overcome the cytotoxic efficacy, uh, uh, efficiency of different drugs. So we need to choose therapy that they cannot, uh, uh, that uh, the therapy will be very effective in the hallmarks of cancer cells. And what is uh, the last but not least uh, uh, characteristic of, of uh, the tumor and uh, tumor microenvironment? That there is a glucose starvation near the acrotic area because we don't have a vessel there. So the glucose there is on the lower level but cancer cells uh, can overcome this problem, not as our normal cells. So we also focus on targeting to those cells by glucose receptors. So we know that they need a lot of glucose 
to grow, to divide, to expand. And sometimes we connect our drugs with glucose. So cancer cells, when they see glucose, they say, oh, let's eat it, let's eat it. And our normal cells, they not, don't need a lot of glucose, not as much as cancer cells. So that's why we are, um, when we know the characteristic of tumor microenvironment, we can uh, design different therapies that will focus on cancer cells. So we call this process uh, selective therapy. So why photosensitizer and why oxygen? On this picture, we can see that the light that we use will uh, be absorbed by photosensitizer, by this substance, by this drug, by this natural plant uh, substance, uh, sub substance. And then we have two types of uh, action. The first type uh, is connected with uh, the first type of uh, the re reaction. So the molecular oxygen and the electrons from the oxygen will move through to the uh, different uh, compounds of cancer cells, especially nucleic, nucleic acids, amino acids, fatty acids, and they will destroy uh, our structures that build our cancer cells. And cancer cell will die when we destroy the um, main compounds of cancer cell. Then we have also second part. And in the second reaction, we can see that the uh, process is connected with reactive oxygen um, production, especially singlet oxygen. So with the light we and the absorption of light, we have the transformation the, the electrons from oxygen, and then we have this singlet oxygen that is very toxic for cells. Every cell will die when we, uh, we called it um, mm, stress, oxygen stress. And when we get generate this ox oxygen stress, every cell will die. So we work with these two types. And to produce those two reactions, we need our light. What about experiments? So when I go to the lab, I will use uh, this time, I would like to present some uh, very beautiful natural substance. So it's the curcumin that we have in our kitchen. Uh, and this is a uh, Curcuma longa uh, derivate, the Indian spice, very, very yellow. Yeah, and we use it in our kitchen, but we uh, know that this substance is very good for photodynamic therapy. Why? Because when we close it in liposomes, so we can see here in li liposome and the curcumin, we have curcumin that is closed in liposome. Why scientists like to close everything in liposome or in measles or any other drug carriers? Because as you can imagine, curcumin, when you add the curcumin to the milk and we have golden mil milk, or we can add it to the water, we can see that there is very low solub solubility of this agent. Yeah, so how? it can go through the membrane of cancer cell. It's very, very difficult. And the solubility of curcumin is very low. So that's why we like to put everything that is very um, uh, hard to uh, connect with water in something as a nanocarrier. And then when we close it, we can incubate it with cancer cells. And after just two hours, one hour, we have inside cancer cell, our curcumin and the liposome is okay. So it will be divided. And if a uh, cancer cell will, would like to use something from liposome, it will be used or if not, it doesn't matter because we wanted to kill our cancer cells. 
So the third step is that when we have our cancer cells with the curcumin inside, so the photosensitizer, we use appropriate light. We use the different powers of light and then we focus this light on this area where the, when the, where the cancer uh, is in our body. And what with those two effects that I described in the previous slide, we can observe that our cells are dying, cancer cells, and they can die in many, many ways, let's say particularly in three ways, but the main common is autophagy, uh, necrosis, and apoptosis. And we scientists are focused on the process called programmed cell death, so apoptosis. What does it mean? I will share with you on the next slide. So here on the slide, you can see different kinds of skin cells. And the first picture presents you melanoma cells. We call this cell line beautifully magma 2. So these are melanoma cells. Then we have squamous cell carcinoma cells. You can see that they look totally different, all of them. And we have HACAT cells. We call them HACAT cells, but these are normal keratinocytes. Why we use normal keratinocytes? Because we want to observe what's the difference in um, taking to, to the inside of cancer cell of our drug, of our photosensitizer, and what's the difference when we connect it with the normal cells? So we want to prove that our photosensitizer will go quicker to cancer cells than to normal cells. So we will still say something about uh, selectivity. Then on the lower picture, you can see the, uh, the uh, approach, the tool that we use to produce photodynamic therapy. So we have cells there and we uh, give them some time with the photosensitizer. Oh, sorry for that. And we turn on our light and after one minute, two minutes, three minutes, and uh, minutes, it depends of, of uh, the power that we want to use in our experiment. We turn on the therapy, but it takes uh, minutes, not hours. So we just want to um, that our photosensitizer absorb, photosensitizer absorb the light and then we generate oxygen species or we destroy organelles in cancer cell with the electrons from oxygen. So here are some results and how you can read those results. So we use a special test to uh, measure photosensitivity and photocytotoxicity so of our treatment. And we use this assay, we call this assay MTT assay. Uh, it's the abbreviation of the drug that we use after 24 hours, but we can also check it after 48 hours. Uh, and here you can see, I choose blue color, so you can see the cells, let's say 100 cells means that no cell in our plate, in our well on the plate is not dying. They are all alive. And when we use light, I change the color and we have this orange when we use the therapy with light. So the blue one means that we don't use light and the orange means that we uh, use light. And what you can see here, uh, we have those three cell lines. So let's say I lost my arrow. Uh, this is our magma, so melanoma cell, our squamous cell carcinoma cell, the main one type, and HACAT as a control cell, as a normal cell. So what we can see here, we have different dose of curcumin. We have liposomal curcumin, 
and we have a different dose of curcumin inside liposomes. So from this experiment, you can clearly see that comparing to control cells, we will use for the further experiments liposomal curcumin in dose of 10. And we can see that without light, it can produce some cytotoxic effect, but not as big as the, uh, as the therapy. So when we use our light and we have half of our cells killed by this therapy in melanoma cells. Then we checked squamous cell carcinoma and the effect is almost the same. So we also kill, why we don't kill all of them? Because for the further experiments, we are interested in some that will survive. So we want to check what kind of day, death cancer cells die. So it was necrosis, apoptosis, or autophagy. So we want to check, because we can say that our therapy is eff efficient when cancer cells will die uh, with the process of programmed cell death. So that's why we need those 50% of cells. And when we see HACAT cells, so our normal keratinocytes, we can see that there's no effect. Almost every sample look okay. So we can move further with our experiments and examination. So let's go further. I choose the results of flow cytometry. So how flow cytometry works, we have a special machine and we check every cell from the experiment. So every dot here, every dot here means that we have one cell one event and what those part fields means like that we have here cells that are alive these cells are early apoptotic so they want to die those cells already died in the process of apoptosis and those cells died in the other process so these are cells that are dying but they died uh, in the process, let's say, of necrosis, so the different one process. So we count every cell from every sample, and after all, we can see that in magma, when we connect liposomal curcumin with light, we have a lot of apoptosis. When we connect Photodynamic therapy, liposomal and curcumin, uh, uh, liposomal curcumin and light, we have also apoptosis. And when we check it with the normal cells, sometimes there is apoptosis too. But it could be a natural process, or we just need to go down with our power of light, or we need to change the dose of the curcumin. So we can check if our therapy in the slow cytometry experiment is moving uh, our therapy, is moving our cells to the apoptosis, so programmed cell death or necrosis. And we prefer scientists and uh, patients the process of programmed cell death because uh, there's uh, no inflammation process in our body. So the cells are just, getting smaller and smaller and smaller and they disappear. And when we have a necrosis, cells are growing, they die and every cell in our organism know that there is a inflammation we have to do with the mass of cells that are dying something. So there is a process of trying to get out all this mass of dying cells out from our body so it's not so it's not a natural process and every day we lose some cells in the process of apoptosis so programmed cell death so every day we lose cells in this process and there is no problem in uh, removing those cells out and it's a natural process so when we try to invent new therapy we would like to have a lot of apoptosis measured 
Uh, yeah, and this is why we use this experiment. The flow cytometry. What we have here, so this experiment, we called wound healing assay. And what we see uh, here, we measure through this test uh, if our cells can divide, cancer cells can divide when we use our therapy, and if they are and they have ability to grow the wound. So they still divide, they still migrate, and they want to uh, spread out. So causing cause metastasis. So here's the short result that when we use our, our hack up cells, we can see that after 24 hours, after our therapy, control cells, when we do the scratch, we call this space scratch. So we have the layer of our cells, we do the scratch, then we do our therapy. And after 24 hours, you can see that in control cells, they divide, they migrate. Everything is fine. And you can see the same effect in control cells of uh, squamous cell carcinoma and magma. But when we use our therapy, we can see that from the beginning to the end, normal cells divide and they grow and the scratch is smaller. But what is here? with the cancer, the scratch is still there. So our cancer cells, they stopped dividing. So the therapy is somehow working on the metastasis, on the movement, on the proliferation. So in this very simple test, we can check uh, also how our therapy uh, uh, improved um, the photo killing reaction of the photodynamic therapy. Yeah, so success. Let's move to the summary. So I hope that after this short presentation, you can uh, clearly see that curcumin is a quite good uh, photosensitizer. And we, as a scientist, see its role in that. And it's better to have it encapsulated, what we saw in the previous first slide with the results. And that the reaction is minimal in human normal keratinocytes. So what does it mean that our proposed therapy uh, it is very good when we want to kill cancer cells, when we want our normal health, uh, healthy cells to survive this therapy. And we can see the minimal inv invasiveness of this therapy on the normal cells. So why it's very important for us designers of new therapies? Because when we have uh, radiation, when we have chemotherapy, when we have surgery, we need to work with side effects. And sometimes side effects are so huge, so big that our patients feel bad. And sometimes they die because side effects, not of the therapy alone. So this is my goal to find the balance between uh, helping with the new therapy, but with the, uh, also side effects, we don't want them to be very, very uh, dramatic uh, for our pi patients. But we still are here and focusing on cells in in vitro uh, phase. We can also measure the effectiveness of photodynamic therapy using mice. And this is the next step. And then if effects are fine, we can move towards patients because still photodynamic therapy is not a very, um, it's not a common method of treatment. We can use it and doctors use it in some cases, 
but still we need to find uh, improvement uh, in photosensitizers and because curcumin I presented that it's a perfect photosensitizer but as you can uh, imagine there are some also problems with it and we need to find a perfect dose uh, because photodynamic therapy, the light can be dangerous for us. So this is the story from the different side. Uh, when we use too much dose of light, we will kill everything and we will have burn skin and the patient will feel also pain. So we need to uh, measure every aspect of therapy. Wow, that's, that's really um, um, magnificent that you are working with this because you said some things that really brought my attention to the fact that what you're doing with light is you are outsmarting basically cancer cells because what cancer cells are doing with the current drugs that are they're given is that they outsmart the drugs, correct? So... Yeah. With light, you are targeting those cells so that you they don't outsmart the light, basically, right? And yeah, they are not prepared for the light. They're so. not prepared for the light, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so let me ask you, how long did this research take you? And you said that the next phase is with mice, and then the next phase is with humans. So what is the process of that? How, is, how does that look like in the time frame? Yeah, so maybe you heard some, uh, somewhere, somehow that when we want to develop a new drug, it's the way, it's the process of 15 or 20 years. Uh, so we need this time to find every aspect that our therapy is uh, touching. And we need to find every side effect and we want to find it before we start mm, doing the uh, therapy to humans. Uh, so yes, um, when we scientists are happy that we uh, find something, we know that it's a process yeah. and that we need uh, 10 years, 15 years. So yeah, and a lot of money because as you can imagine working with cells in, in vitro phase, is quite a low, in a low cost. There are low costs of that. And when we move further, the costs are higher and higher and higher. So that's why all new therapies are very, very expensive. But still, photodynamic therapy consists of two elements. Light is for free almost, mm -hmm. and, the sense, uh, and the sensitizer when we use natural will be also very, very cheap. When you want to create a new photosensitizer, it will cost a little bit more. And just to ask a little bit about the light is what specific uh, frequencies and what colors are you using in your experiment? I use blue light, green and red. And uh, we choose the color of light because of this photosensitizer. So for doctors, the best one is red. Why? Because it can be great through our screen, skin uh, for one and a half centimeter. So if we have big tumor, we can using this light and we have the area that is irradiated around one and a half centimeter. And if we have blue light, the energy of blue light cannot migrate very, very deep in our skin, in our tumors. So, uh, Doctors prefer and patients prefer to use red light. But um, we know that some natural substances will be irradiated with the blue light or with the green light. And that this uh, kind of light of the color will produce the reaction with the oxygen. So the color depends on the characteristic of photosensitizer. Now. Oh. Marta, this is very exciting work that you're doing, and I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't take you 10, 15 years to figure out how to cure cancer with light. And I know there's a phase that, you know, it has to go through all the trials, but this, I think, gives many people a lot of hope to know that there can be a therapy in the future that doesn't have those terrible side effects. 
So I'm very thankful for being here today. And I want to ask you, what's next for you? What is in your horizon in the near future? The next step. So working with mice and checking the therapy on mice. And uh, yeah, that's the next phase. That's the next phase. And how long is that phase going to be? Uh, it depends on money, as you can imagine. <laughs> if I have a lot of money, I can invite many friends to work with, with, with me in the lab. So we will get results sooner. Sooner, okay. Yeah. I know that you present, you have presented this um, information in Europe. And I just was wondering what has been the reaction among your peers with this information? Yeah, I choose uh, many conferences that are uh, for the light um, associations. So they work as my colleagues uh, in the same field. So yeah, you know, they are proud of me and I am proud of them because we work on different kinds of cancer cells on different models. Uh, I mean, uh, different um, models of uh, cancers and other illnesses. So we share our knowledge and when uh, we do that, uh, we believe in this therapy that will be um, not the main one, but still be uh, in the level of the other therapies that we already know very good. Wow. Thank you again, Marta, for being here with us and for sharing your exciting research. And um, I just, I really wish you um, lots of money so that you can move forward with this with this wonderful research with curcumin light and oxygen that's really really exciting and again thank you for being with us thank and, you <laughs> and for all of you watching out there um, become a member of the international light association so that we can continue bringing you amazing scientists and all kinds of therapists and doctors and architects to present on the power of light, color, and sound. And uh, I hope you join us. Thank you.